Good morning, Rockin' Country Church. Isn't it a beautiful day today? Woo! Ooh, woke up this morning and said, ooh, it's just a tad nippy. And then I thought, nah, it's going to be nice. And then I got here and it was a tad nippy. <laughs> well, thank you, Lord. At least I know that I am alive and kicking if I can Amen. say I'm cold. <laughs> Amen. So, gentlemen, if you'll take your hats off, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, loving God, we're just so grateful to be able to come into your house, Lord, and worship you and learn your word. Father, we just are so grateful for that. We have an opportunity to live in a country where we can praise you any time we want to and lift up your holy name, Father. We just ask that you bless us this morning, fill us with your spirit, Lord, that the songs that we do today will touch the heart of someone that's looking for you, Lord. We just know that you are the answer to all of our needs, Yes, Lord. and that's why we come to you today, Lord, today and every day, to thank you for everything that you do. Father, we just ask these things in Jesus Christ's precious holy name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Amy. And that's not it, man. It's a trick. <laughs> Train. I want to ride, ride, ride that glory train. 
Now when my race on earth is through, there's one thing I want to do is to get on board and ride that train. Hear the thunder of the engines, get aboard her if you can, for that final destination is that far off promised land, where the master will be waiting in his home way up above, and he'll fill our hearts with gladness, with his great eternal love, I want to ride that glory train, I want to ride, ride, ride that glory train. Now when my race on earth is through, there's one thing I want to do is to get on board and ride that train. Ride that glory train, ride that train. Now when you step up to the station and this train's about to leave, you'll be sure to have a ticket if you really do believe. Now the master's waiting for you in his good home up above. And he'll fill our hearts with gladness, with his great eternal love. I want to ride that glory train. I want to ride, ride, ride that glory train. Now when my race on earth is through, there's one thing I want to do is get on board and ride that train. Booths, all right. <laughs> this is pretty basic. That's basically it. <laughs> Just a closer one I am weak, but thou art strong. Ooh, y'all sound great. Jesus, keep me from all.
think of the past and all that you done for me as I watched the descending of the doves it was in the springtime that you said goodbye and I remember your faithful love well I love you Jesus more and more every day as the heavens adore the stars above and with every heartbeat I still this morning and I think when I made my rounds I think I got to just about everybody but now it's like some faces I missed do we have any first time visitors today I see some hands back there and I see some over here Ooh, Robbie you got a job to do this morning That bag is just a little something put together by the ladies' ministry. The main thing that's in there is an ink pen and a visitor's card. I would love for you to fill out that visitor's card with that pretty rockin' country church ink pen and drop it in the black mailbox just so we'll know that you've been here and it was a blessing having you. Amen. If you've been coming to Rockin' Country Church and would like to make it your home, we would love to have you make this your home. Amen. We have the most loving family here. It is just wonderful. So if you'd like to make this family yours, then there's a form on that back table. You can fill it out, and at that point, Pastor Woody will get in touch with you. We have Bible study two days a week here on Tuesday mornings at 2.45. And Miss Barbara does an awesome Bible study. She is just so, she, you know, she makes you work because she makes you read and find scripture. So, but it's always a good learning experience and we always leave knowing something that we, we didn't know when we came. And then on Wednesday nights, Pastor Woody does a wonderful Bible study when? 645. We're in Hebrews, and it's an awesome book. And it just goes, you know, if you want to know what God meant for us to know, you need to come to Bible study. Because that's, that's right, Johnny. Thank you. That's absolutely true. On May the 5th, we're having our women's ministry meeting here at the church at 1045. Uh, Terry just said bring a Bible. So that's all I know. So uh, 1045, I'm sure we'll be blessed with something. Not sure why, but blessed. On the 6th, we're having our monthly luncheon. Uh, there hasn't been very very much on the sign-up part, so if you're planning on bringing something, if you'll sign it on the back, just so we'll have an idea of which direction we need to go. So we always want to make sure we have plenty of food for everybody, even if you don't bring anything. So we have that. Uh, 
Miss Kathy wants to talk about the Lake Area Women's Meeting. So, Miss Kathy. I want to remind everyone, this is our first meeting, and I'm really excited about it because we're going to get to know the ladies and the other churches, and we're looking forward to doing the big things that these ladies and reaching out to our community. The girls of the great house will be here on that day. So it will be a lovely meeting, and we'll learn more about the great house. So please do come. So may I no, it's May 12th. May 12th. May 12th. Oh, yeah. And we're going to have brunch. Oh, yes. I'm going to get full. Also, our first class, we have to sign up to the <laughs> Now, we already have four readers, one for, you know, every Sunday, but I just thought that we could get more people involved. Then you might only have to do it for a few times. And it's a blessing too, you know, and everyone is there, you can sign up in stairs if you would like. So please, men and women, think about signing up on our readers list. I will be there for a few weeks and then I'll try to set up a location. Okay. So uh, you did say that it was a, a brunch, but it's a potluck, so we all bring a, bring a side dish. So that will be a lot of fun. And then Mr. Billy. Thank you. Guys, our, our men's uh, meeting is normally the third weekend of uh, breakfast, the third weekend of each month. This weekend, uh, this month, month of May, we had to move it back one week. So rather than meeting on the 19th, the third weekend, we'll be meeting on the 26th, the fourth weekend, the seventh for our men's breakfast. Any questions? Tell them why. I'll, on the 19th, the third weekend, I will be retired from the military at the third weekend of the service. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it is. Uh, on the 20th of May, Trusting Him will be here to lead us our praise and worship. If you didn't hear them during the resurrection celebration, you really need to come because they really give you a blessing. And I, I, I don't even know what else to say. You will be missing a whole lot if you don't show up for this. Also, our team, our leadership meeting will be uh, that morning after our Sunday service. It's an open meeting. Everyone is welcome. We we love to have we like to have every single person stay because the more that's there, the more insight that we have on how we can make God's house grow, but also the community. So we, we love having everybody here. On the 27th, James Dyson will be leading us with our message that morning. Um, I don't think Woody asked if he could have a Sunday off. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> well, my, but, uh, my first grandbaby, or my oldest grandbaby, is graduating high school, and I think it's at 1 o'clock, and I'm going to be there. That's Amen. right. Amen. And I think that's awesome. First grandbaby graduating is very special. So, yes, uh, we will absolutely let you have the day off. Thank you. <laughs> if... Uh, here at Rockin' Country Church, we do. I see a hand machine. Oh, May the 4th. And that, uh, who's there this week? Oh, Tommy Brent's going to be there. Okay. Okay. So that'll be May the 4th, and that's at 6, in, in, is that at 7? From 6 to 8. So if you want to eat, you need to get there early so that you can get, and it's usually catfish or chicken tenders. So uh, it's, so we usually get there around 5 or so, and it gives us plenty of time to fellowship with everybody. So that's a good thing. Here we do not pass our... Uh, my mind's gone. It just left. <laughs> Today, I, I'm through. <laughs> we do not pass a hat, boot, or plate here at Rocking Country Church. So as the Lord leads you to give, we ask that you put it in an envelope on the back table and drop it in the black mailbox. 
We're also looking for some assistance for uh, the children's ministry with Miss Terry. Uh, Jack has some uh, audio, visual, and the camera to see Jack. And then we're starting something new. We're going to have a prayer warrior, prayer warriors text messaging system, and we're getting it set up. And we'll have uh, some. Sign up sheets on the back table if you want to participate in this. And it's just all through text. So there's no phone calls or nothing if, if you get the text and you send it on through. So it's gonna it's it, it's a good thing. Prayer is always a good thing. Amen. So and on the back page here is our prayer request. I've added a few. Daryl Harkins, uh, Darlene Daniels. And Janet Lusk, uh, all for illness. And uh, we know that God answers prayers and the laying of the hands. So if you'll lay your hands on your prayer request. And gentlemen, if you'll remove your hats. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today with so much love in our hearts for you. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done for us. We give you all the praise and the glory, and we thank you for your loving mercy and grace. I ask that you lift up each person on this list. Father God, you know their needs, whether it be health, financial, spiritual, whatever. You know what each person needs, and we ask that you wrap your loving arms around them and give them all they need. I come to you today with the family of the fallen police officer this week. I ask that you lift up all of our uniformed first responders, men, women. We want them to go home safely at night, Father. All of our military, just wrap your arms around them and let them go home to their families safe and sound. I ask you to help the homeless and the hungry. I don't want anyone to go to sleep hungry and I don't want anyone not to have a shelter over their heads. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. i 
this home again Yes, I think God must be a cowboy at heart He made wide open spaces from the start I mean, you got boots. Yeah, well, I know, but they're, uh, there's no dirt on them. That counts. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing on them. We can fix it. Sidewalk cowgirl right here. <laughs> uh, you don't have to have a horse. I rode a horse one time, but it drug me across an arena. So I'm not doing that no more. <laughs> Y'all go ahead. <laughs> you can have a steel horse. <laughs> yes.
right, y'all here. Yeah. Y'all doing great today? I know I am. Hey, Amen. You know, uh, that's uh, God puts it all together every week. I mean, He just does. Uh, this morning, I was not sure what I was going to teach on today. I had not a clue, really. And last night, I couldn't sleep, and I was praying it up, and I was talking to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I'm going to watch some ministry so I can maybe get some ideas of what I'm supposed to teach tomorrow. Well, nothing I'm going to teach today was on last night, let me tell you. <laughs> Holy Spirit came over this morning, and he says, guess what? This is what we're going to do this morning. I said, let's go, Lord. So uh, I'm actually, I know Mother's Day is coming up on the 15th. But I have to do as the Lord directs me to do. So most likely, and so far anyway, uh, we're going to start a series on the book of Revelation. And you'll see why we need to do that series in just a little bit. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to do my usual Mother's Day message right now or if we're going to do the book of Revelation. Because uh, it, I, I know some of you are saying, hey, uh, well, uh, this, is, uh, this is not Bible study. I think Bible study is supposed to be Tuesday morning, Wednesday night, right? Well, you need to study the Word of God each and every day. And my job, if you will call it a job, my privilege is really more what it is. My privilege is to bring forth the Word of God, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, as God directs me to do it. And that's what I'm going to do. But uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to it because uh, I'm fixing to retire this old Bible. It's, uh, you hey, I can give you that part and... I mean, there's, there's lots of it there, but it's it's getting to the point where I can't even carry it. It's falling apart, and uh, it's I think it's time to get another one. But um, anyway, but before I do it, what better way to end the life of, in a sense, the life of that particular book? I'm not going to say the Bible because the Bible never ends. But that particular book on the book that is above all books, which is the Book of Revelation, you'll see what I mean whenever we get into our teaching. Um, a couple of things I want to make mention of. Uh, I have secured our seats uh, for the resur I mean for the uh, resurrection celebration. I'm a couple of weeks behind, ain't I? Uh, for Harvest America, which is coming up on June the 10th, I've secured the bus, and our actually Bill has secured the bus, and uh, but I have secured the bus through uh, Harvest America, and uh, we've got uh, our seats reserved and all that. But we still need to fill up the bus. I don't know how many we have yet, but it's filling up quick. And it is $20 a seat if you want to go. This is the only way that you're guaranteed a seat inside the stadium. Now, if you get there at 3 o'clock and the doors open at 3.30, most likely you're going to get a seat. But uh, they're expecting over 100,000 people this year. And the stadium only holds 80,000. So, you know, that's uh, if you get a seat, you get a seat. There's no reserved seating. So, uh, except for if you're on a bus. And so we're going to be on that bus. We're going to have a bus. And uh, if you want a seat on it, get with Bill back there. It is $20 a seat to help pay for the bus. Uh, the church will pay the $50 for the bus parking, which goes to Mr. Jones. So anyway, if you're interested in that, please see Bill. Well, raise your hand, Bill, so everybody knows who you are. That's him back yonder in the back. All right? Um, if you look at the side of our uh, uh, audio video stand back there, we have two boxes back there that say Soul for Souls. And uh, these are slightly used uh, shoes. If you've got any or we didn't really have any, mine are worn out. I wear them until they fall apart. And so uh, I actually went and bought a couple of pair and, and uh, put in there. So uh, if you want to contribute to that, please do so. Just bring it and put it in there. It looks like we need to call River of Life to come get this load so we can start another load. And, uh, and we'll do that. And, and we thank you for that. The purpose of that is, is that they take these shoes and they actually sell them for a very, very minimum cost, like 25 cents, 50 cents, something like that, to people of third world countries. They in turn take these shoes and build a business selling shoes to other people in their third world countries for like a dollar, dollar and a quarter, whatever. But it teaches them to be a business and to establish a business. And it is, uh, it is a very huge, huge ministry. That is uh, that is blessing many people in third world countries because most of these people don't have shoes. They don't have shoes. A dollar, according to what I understand, a dollar, if they sold a pair of shoes for a buck, a dollar would pretty much feed their family for one day. Wow, that's pretty remarkable. A dollar wouldn't feed me one meal. <laughs> but it would feed, it'd feed an entire family. So uh, anyway, let's, if you can contribute to that, please do so. Just put it around the boxes and I'll make sure it gets to uh, River of Life. All right. Um, this is very, very important, actually. I'm going to do one other thing prior to that. 
Uh, I got a little note here from our ladies. Last week was Secretary's Week. Uh, Wednesday was actually National Secretary's Day. And uh, we, uh, you ladies stand up again, please. Miss Edie and Laurie and uh, Miss Myra. These are our secretaries. These, these ladies, we could not exist if without these ladies. The bulletin you have in your hand through all of our books and everything else. Thank you, ladies. Uh, I mean, this is all done by them all through the week, behind the scenes. Uh, they keep this church straight. They keep me straight. They keep everything straight. I mean, this, these ladies are awesome, and we owe them a bit of gratitude, no doubt, and we tried to express that last week. Well, in return, they sent us a little note, and it says, it was a wonderful blessing to receive the beautiful flowers and gift cards we thank you with all of our hearts we love serving our God in any way he wants us to blessings Myra Edie and Laurie so they thank you now this church exists for one reason one reason alone and that is to worship God how do we worship God we worship God by building his kingdom and we have a announcement to make that next week we're going to have a rededication. Miss Barbara Gibbs has just joined our church. You got to stand up, dear. Sorry. She has decided to be rededicated next Sunday, so we will have her rededication next Sunday. Welcome to the kingdom of God again, sister. Amen. With that, let's go ahead and uh, dismiss our children after we pray. And we'll dismiss our children and we'll get started on with our teaching today. Guys, if you'll remove your hands, please, Heavenly Father. Lord God, most precious, precious Father. We thank you, Lord, that we can come into your house and worship you and praise you and glorify you with our hearts and with our souls and our spirits. We ask you to send, send the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit, he is present. He's already here. But let him touch our hearts, souls, and minds and open up our spirits to receive your word today, which is Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for all that you do for us each and every day. We humbly come before you, Lord, asking you to fill us with the word of God that you have prepared today. Lord, use myself, use Miss Terry, use the others of, of the, uh, in the classes to bring forth your word, which is Jesus. Teach us what you want us to know, Lord, and not what myself or Miss Terry or others might want to teach. Let it be you, Lord, always. Let it be your word. We thank you for that, and it's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and dismiss the kiddos. <coughs> Well, welcome, everybody. I'm actually looking for a particular person that we met over in Chili's the other day. Um, Trevor, are you here? I don't see you. I still don't see you. <laughs> but there's a fellow named Tra uh, Trevor that we met, in, him and his family, beautiful family. We met them in Chili's the other night. And anyway, we talked with them for a little while and, and, of course, asked them to come to church. So we were looking forward to seeing them today. But, you know, things happen. They may or may not be here. We're going to be in a couple of different books today. So uh, I do ask that you follow along. If anybody needs a Bible, please raise your hand. We'll get you one. And uh, anybody need one? I do ask you to follow along in the Bible so that you can see what's, what, uh, what I talk about is in there. All right. No one needs one. Good deal. Good deal. Last week we talked about in Ecclesiastes 3, and I'm going to go there, and I have mine marked. That's not our scripture today, so you don't have to go there if you don't want to, but you might want to write this down. I'm going to read something out of Ecclesiastes 3, and I'm not going to go over everything I talked about last week, but this is going to lead us to where we need to go, according to the way God showed it to me. In Ecclesiastes 3, down in verse 8, it says, There's a time to love, a time to hate, a time to war, and a time for peace. A time for war and a time for peace. If you think about that, there's a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. If you think about that, the time to love is right now. The time to love is right now. This is what we call the church age. 
And this is the time that we are supposed to be building God's kingdom the way that Jesus taught us to, which is out of love. He did not teach us to, to build his kingdom. He did not welcome anyone into his kingdom out of hate. He did not threaten anybody out of, out of hate of his heart. He threatened the Pharisees and the Sadducees, tried to get them to realize who he was, which they never did. But he, did, he never rejected anyone. Whether you were a believer or not, it did not matter. If you came to Christ and you needed something, he would take care of your issues. I love the story of blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus was a beggar. The lowest of lows sitting beside the street one day. As Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem to be crucified, to die, he had just came through uh, Jericho. And this guy was sitting there on the side of the street saying, Jesus, Jesus. And all the disciples said, hey, you need to be quiet, man. This, this is Jesus walking through here. He's only for us good people. And this beggar said, no, Jesus, Jesus. And Jesus stopped in his tracks. He stopped in his tracks whenever you called it, when Bartimaeus called his name. When you call the name of Jesus, Jesus stops in his tracks for you. It doesn't matter who you are. He will stop in his tracks and he says, yes, what do you need from me? Because everybody comes to Jesus when they need something, right? We don't usually come to him if we don't need anything. Oh, well, I got this one, Jesus. That's all right. I don't need you today. You take the day off, all right? Jesus never takes a day off. Because you're probably going to mess up sometime during the day. And then you're going to be hollering, Jesus, Jesus. So he never takes the day off. <laughs> But there's going to come a time, there's going to come a time for war and a time for peace. Now back through the history of time, we always have had wars and times of peace. But there's only been, and I don't remember the exact statistic of it, but I think it's only like 30 years or so that through the entire history of mankind, there's only been, it's all broken down into different times, there's only been like a, a equivalency of a, like 30 years that there's not been a war going on in the world. Only 30 years out of 6,000 whatever years it's been. Only about 30 years has there not been wars going on somewhere. And we've got wars today. I mean, we got them going on big time right now, right? Well, we're going to talk today and we're going to start leading into a war of wars. And the time of that war is coming. But then after that, it's going to be a time of peace. Over in verse uh, 14, Ecclesiastes 14. Again, you don't have to be there if you don't want to, but uh, I just want to read this. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken from it. God does it so that people will fear him. Not fear him as in, oh my gosh, God's going to send down a boat of lightning and I'm going to be vaporized. And I think you see that on Star Trek, right? Beam me up, Scotty. But Captain, I got no more power. Help me, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I do a pretty good Scotty, I think. You have a very poor jump. <laughs> but, Jim, you must go and help him do what he needs to do in order to get Spock back into the ship. All right, anyway. The fear of God, the fear of God is not to be scared that he's going to vaporize you or something. The fear of God is to fear the fact that you may hurt his heart. That's what the fear of God is. We don't want to displease God. We want God to be pleased with us. And so our goal is to please the heart of God, not to hurt the heart of God. Whatever has already been and whatever will be has before, been before. And God will call the past to account. And I saw something else under the sun. In the place of, in the place of judgment, wickedness was there. In the place of justice, wickedness was there. I said to myself, God will bring into judgment both the righteous and the wicked. Both the righteous and the wicked. 
That means that you and I, as well as all the bad people, are going to stand before God at some point in time on our own merits. Okay. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Get her. Get the baby taken care of. There you go. Beautiful baby, by the way. God will bring into judgment both the righteous and the wicked. That means each and every one of us will face Christ someday and be judged. Oh, well, I thought you meant only the bad people were going to be judged. No, you will be judged on your attitude with the things that he provides for you now and what you do with them. Amen. Well, how come you went to church every Sunday and but you never did anything Monday through Saturday with what you, you learned on Sunday? Well, I just went to get my tank filled up, Lord. It's not a matter of you getting taken care of because once you've come to Christ, you're taken care of. It's done. But what about all the other people out there that you, have, you come in contact with that you know and some that you love that don't have a tank, that doesn't have their tank filled up? That's what you're called to do. You're called to be minister, ministers of the word, same as I am. For there will be a time for every activity, a time to judge every deed, every deed. We will be judged and you will be judged and I will be judged at some point in time. So we need to know what we need to do. Well, in order to know what we need to do, need to do, we need to know what is expected of us, right? We're going to go into the book of Revelation today. Before I retire this book, as God has told me so far, we're going to go through the book of Revelation. Well, I didn't come here for you to read, dummy. That's what they do in children's school, isn't it? If you'll bear with me a minute you will see that there are blessings that come from the person who reads the book of, of Revelation and there are blessings that come from the person who hears the book of Revelation. And how are you going to hear it if, if it's not read to you? So we're going to do that. Why? Because that's what God says to do. <coughs> Revelation is a book to be read aloud to receive the blessing and it is a book to be received or heard to receive a blessing. You know, some of you may, some may think, well, you know, I just came to, as I mentioned a minute ago, get my tank filled up because I know all week long I'm going to mess up. My tank's going to get low, so I'm going to come back next Sunday and get it filled up again. Well, if you will take the book of Revelation, well, I can't read that book. It's too hard to read. It's all symbolism. Don't get caught up in the symbolism of the book. Be, get caught up in the meaning of the book and what the book was written for. And I, I think and I hope by the time we finish this, now I'm going to paraphrase a lot of it and probably skip a lot of it, but you need to understand if you read the book of Revelation, you will know a good 50% of what you need to know about being a Christian. A good 50% of it. Well, I know all I need to do. I just need to come to church and get, uh, you know, get baptized and listen to you every Sunday. Even though my wife makes me, I still do it so that I can get it all from you. I don't want you to get it from me. I want you to get it from the Word. The book of Revelation is very important in your life. I've read it. I've taught it several times. I love it. Because it reveals. That's what Revelation means. It reveals the truths of God to me that I need to know. So that I know the end of the story. And the knowing the end of the story is what gets me through the, the, the life that I have to live until then. Before we go there, though, I want to go over to Luke 4. If you go over to Luke 4. Luke 4 and verse 
14. Luke 4, verse 14. Jesus had just gone into the wilderness after his baptism and was tempted by the Satan four or three times in order to try Satan to try to get him to surrender to to Satan to get Jesus the man surrendered to, to surrender to Satan and of course <clears throat> Jesus overcame all the temptations that Satan had to throw at him well after he finished and came out of this 40 day uh, period in the wilderness he came to start his ministry and this is the starting of Jesus' ministry as according to the writer Luke. In verse 14 it says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. He had been 40 days with, in the wilderness being tempted by, by Satan, being hungry, being thirsty, being tired, being worn out, going through the motions of, of experiencing all the things that we would experience that would just wear us out and deter us from, from keeping our faith and staying in faith. Jesus faced all those trials for 40 days without eating or drinking or resting. But the Holy Spirit was on him the entire time, helping him, getting him through these troubling times. Just like that song said a little bit ago, the storms are going to come, but Jesus is there with you and he will get you through it. The Holy Spirit was there with Jesus in the wilderness, getting him through that time. Jesus the man, because Jesus didn't take any of his deity upon himself, Philippians 2, in order to save himself or to take care of himself. He, he walked through those temptations as a man, just like you and I would have to walk through them. And he conquered Satan. Now he's returning to Galilee in the power, the power of the Spirit. There's power in the Spirit. Amen. And that Spirit is available to you and me to get through these troubling storms that we have come up. And the news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues and everybody praised him. He went to Nazareth, his hometown, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as it was his custom. And he stood up and read. <coughs> Excuse me. And he stood up to read. He stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah that was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me, Jesus of course, to proclaim the good news to the poor and has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of the sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The year of the Lord's favor. This church is in its Sabbath year. It's, it's in its seventh year. Amen. This church is, is in its year of favor from the Lord. Jesus was in the favor of the Lord. Jesus was anointed by God. Whenever he came up out of the water, a, a dove lit on him. And the voice from heaven said, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Not because Jesus had done anything, but because Jesus, uh, God was pleased to be in Jesus as the Holy Spirit, leading him through life as a man to face all the temptations and trials and tribulations that we will face. But yet he made it through unscathed. Unscathed. And if we have that spirit, that power of that spirit that is available to us, then we'll, we will make it through already uh, as well. See, if we know the end of the book, we win in the end. Amen. Thank you. And by knowing that we're going to win in the end, we should be re we should rejoice. We should be glad. We should. I mean, we walk around as Christians. Oh man, this is so bad. Oh, this is so bad. Oh, you know what my husband did last night. Oh, you know what that old woman I married. You know what she does all the time. Man, she just drives me to drink. Oh, all this. Oh, all that. Oh, my aches and pains. All my worries and woes. Man, we ought to be walking around happy and rejoicing. Guess what? We ain't going to hell. Amen. There's a lot of people going to hell, and we ain't going to hell if you have Jesus Christ. 
You ought to be happy about something. Amen. Jeez. <laughs> Jesus says he is anointed. He is chosen by God, and he was. He was the anointed one. But you are also chosen by God to be a part of his kingdom. And you are anointed. You are anointed. <coughs> oh, what do you mean I'm anointed? What does that mean? You're anointed with the Holy Spirit, with the power of the Holy Spirit that is living in you, that will get you through the things that you're having troubles with or struggles with. Amen. You do win in the end. But you have to stay faithful. You have to stay faithful. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. After returning from his victory, though, Jesus says, I am the anointed one to come to the earth to set people free. Remember what Jesus says, and if I set you free, if he set you free, you are free indeed. Amen. I can't set you free. You can't set you free. Jay can't set you free. Johnny can't set you free. Weldon can't set you free. But you can set you free through the belief in, in the faith in Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, I will set you free. That's why he came. One of the reasons he came was to set you free of the worries and woes of this world. We win. Amen. Let's go over to the book of Revelation. Revelation 1. Well, isn't Revelation a really hard book? No. It's not. But it's a, it is a book that comes with a blessing. And it is a book that we need to know. Now again, this first part I am going to do word for word. Because you need to see every word that's in this, this first section here. And then whenever we get into uh, after uh, chapter 3, which is the, uh, we're going to do the churches next week and the week after because there's seven churches that we need to explain. And those seven churches, one of those seven churches, if not two, three, or four maybe, will be a character or characteristic of every, every walking soul that there is. You will fit in one of those churches. Kathy will fit in one of those churches. Sherry, I pointed at. Sherry will fit in one of those churches. Kathy will fit in one of those churches. Johnny will fit in one of those churches. Holly will fit in one of those churches. I remembered your name this week, huh? I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Ron will be one of those churches. I will be one of those churches, if not more. When we go through those seven churches, we will see some characteristics of ourselves somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And it covers, those seven churches will cover all human beings, especially believers. Verse 1, chapter 1, or chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Now this doesn't mean that this is a revelation of somebody else that Jesus came up with to give to somebody else. No, this is the revelation which means the revealing of Jesus and all that is going to happen. This is his vision that he gave John in order to show us what is going to happen in the end times. Well, I'm just worried about now. Today could be the end times. The end times are near. There is nothing else that has to be done for Jesus to come back before Jesus comes by. He could come back today. And we need to know what is in this book. And we're going to study this book of Revelation, which is the revealing of Jesus from Jesus to John. And it says, which God gave him, gave Jesus to show his servants, you and me, what must take place. He made it known by sending his angel to to his servant John this is the, uh, the disciple John the apostle John who was put on the island of Patmos in about the year 90 91 in that general area in order because he was out preaching the gospel and the king says dude I don't want you preaching this mess anymore I'm tired of hearing it and he actually took him prisoner and put him on a, on a deserted island if you will uh, called Patmos 
And there he stayed the remainder of his life. And while he was on this island, Jesus visited with him in the form of an angel and said, this is what is going to happen and I want you to write this down. Now I'm paraphrasing that, but that's what it is. <clears throat> he made it known by sending his angel to this servant John who testifies to everything he saw that is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Wow. The testimony of Jesus Christ. Jesus is saying, look, I want you to write this down because I want you to deliver it to my servants through the book that, uh, that I'm going to create so that in 2018, in the uh, last week or two of April, Rock and Country Church can read about this. That's what Jesus planned. Certainly not rock, just Rock and Country Church, but for the whole world. He wants his servants to know what his revelation is of the end times. What is going to happen. Not what might happen, but what is going to happen. Blessed is the one. You need to highlight verse 3 here. Highlight it, underline it, whatever you want to do. But you need to see this and understand this. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it, who hear it and take it to heart, take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. See that? Blessed is the one who reads it aloud and blessed is the one who hears it and takes it to heart and takes it to heart. In other words, believes it because the time is near. This is a book that comes with a blessing if you read it and if you hear it. Well, I'm just going to come every Sunday and let you read it. <laughs> That's fine, but I'm not going to read it word for word. It will be here. Hey, we, I'm okay with it. You know, we can stay here all day long. All the way to tomorrow. I mean, I'm okay. I love reading this stuff. <laughs> but next week, I, I mean, you only give me an hour of time or about an hour. <laughs> you know, if you think about it, we, if you come to church just on Sunday, you realize you only give God two hours out of your life every week. That's just two hours. Two hours. There's 24 in a day. I don't know how many there is in a week. doesn't matter. But you give God two hours. I think he deserves a lot more than that. And I'm not pointing fingers now, uh, but for the, for the general, uh, we call them CEOs, you know, the, the go to church on Christmas and Easter only, and, uh, you know, just church every once in a while type folks. Again, not judging anybody. But if you only give God one hour a week, I don't even think he can fill your tank in an hour. I need him every day and I get him every day because I, I start out my day with him every day reading scriptures and studying and, and praying etc cetera, etc cetera. I start every day that way because I need that much and I generally go to bed every night that way because I need it he said the time is near and if Woody doesn't finish it here then you probably ought to take it home and read it yourself. Now, that's not in there. It's, you know, if you're looking for that, it's not in there. All right. But he's basically saying is, you know what? If you don't get it all in here, then maybe you ought to take it home and read it yourself. And it would really be a good idea if you kind of get your family around it to you too and you, you read, read it out loud to them because it says, blessed are those who read it aloud and those who hear it. So you want family to be blessed? Take it home and read it. Now, if Pappy would hear, he'd say, well, I can't read. <laughs> but he can read, okay? So if he ever tells you he can't read, don't believe him. He can read and he can write. He can't talk, but he can read and write. 
<laughs> oh, we know he can talk, right? Yeah. All right, verse 4. John to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Now, he's talking about this time back then over in the, in the province of, of, uh, of uh, Turkey and in that general area up there. That's where the seven churches are. They're in the south Turkey, um, just east of Jerusalem, or Israel, and east of Syria. Uh, west, I'm sorry, west of uh, Israel and west of Syria. Area and uh, east of Greece. So in that general area is where all these seven churches are. He's saying, these seven churches here, I have a message for you because these are the seven leading churches of that area. And John, you're going to give this to those seven churches because everybody fits somewhere in those seven churches. You're going to start out, John, by writing this. Grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come who is who was and who is to come and the seven spirits before his throne now just real quickly i want you to flip over to chapter 5 verse 12 and you'll see who the what the 12 spirits are chapter 5 verse 12 You might want to underline these because they're, throughout scriptures, well, actually, it's only in a couple of places, it's going to mention the seven spirits of God. And these are the seven spirits of God. So it's uh, chapter 12, verse 5 of Revelation. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, that is Christ himself, to receive one power, two wealth, three wisdom, four strength, five honor six glory and seven praise those are the seven spirits of god power wealth wisdom strength honor glory and praise who would not want one of them right Amen. who would not want them all every one of those are available to you every one of them are available to you through the holy spirit Amen. every one of them <laughs> Chapter 5, verse 12. Did I? Yeah, you're transferred. Well, you're supposed to understand that I'm backwards. That's what we asked. Okay, chap I'm sorry. Chapter 5, verse 12. Just remember, dys dyslexic people or are, are dyslexics are people poo. <laughs> You're going to think on that one for a minute, right? Yeah, like Dyslexics are teeple poo. Oh, okay. okay? All right. Chapter 5, verse 12. That's the seven spirits of God. Sorry for that. I'm only human. Before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who is, the, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. The ruler of the kings of the earth. Jesus is Lord of Lord, kings of kings. This is uh, verse 5 of chapter 1. Remember, I just said flip over to 5 to get the seven spirits. Then we should come back. Okay. My bad again. <coughs> All right. I figured out one of these years. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. That can only be Christ Jesus. Only his blood is the one that can wash away our sins. And has made us to be king, a kingdom... All right, now get this next one. And priests to serve his God and Father. You are of the priestly lineage now because you are a Christian. I hope you are. But you are now called to be a priest. Well, I don't want to be a priest. That's one of them got to do this stuff, wear the collar and all that. That's not what he's talking about. Okay, that happens to be a religion. And I'm not knocking that religion at all. Okay. He's talking about a priest, someone who, was, who is honored by God, who is glorified by God, who has the power of the Holy Spirit in order to go out and bring others into the kingdom. That's what God wants you to do. That's your mission in life. Amen. Your mission in his life is to build his kingdom through one soul at a time that you can touch. That you can touch. Verse 7. 
<laughs> oh, I've got to finish six. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Verse seven. Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him. Now, you say, oh, well, that's the Romans then. That's written to the Romans. No, no, everyone who pierced him. That means everyone who denies him. This day and time when Christ comes back, every eye, every Christian will see him. Also, every person who denies him will see him. It's going to be too late. But everybody will see him coming back. Even the ones that pierce his heart by rejecting him. <laughs> this is very important because many people say well will we see Christ whenever he comes back scripture just said every eye will see him everyone will see him we will know whenever he comes back well I just can't wait till Jesus comes back well how will I know he came back every eye will see him See how plain and simple it really is? Religion seems to make it quite difficult sometimes, but it's really quite easy. Every eye will see him, even those that reject him. And all peoples of the earth, all, which includes all, right? That means no one will not. All the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. Now we'll mourn because of him. Why would a Christian mourn because of him? Number one, because he had to die for us to be saved. Number two, our hearts will be so overwhelmed with joy and glory. There's no way that we can we cannot mourn. We cannot stop the tears uh, for all the people who are going to be lost because the time is over. They cannot go to heaven after that point in time. And we're going to look back and we're going to see people that we love and we dearly love and we talk to over and over and over. And we tried to encourage them and we tried to tell them, well, come unto the kingdom. Just come to church. Just listen for a little bit. Just give it a shot. Give it a try. I don't need any of that stuff. And we're going to look back at them and our hearts are going to be broken because they're not going to heaven. Yeah. They're not going to go. Well, what do you mean they're not going to go? You've given a chance right now, time and time and time and time again, to know God, to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Many people will say, oh, well, I'll wait till next week. Oh, well, it's not quite for me. Well, I'll wait till I get this or that and the other straightened out in my life. Jesus says today is the day of salvation. Your salvation. Yes. Because you're not guaranteed tomorrow. Amen. Jesus goes on to proclaim, I am the Alpha Omega. Says the Lord God. Who is. Who is. Who is today. Is right now. God is alive. Jesus is alive right now. He was in the beginning and he will, be in, he will be there in the end. Who is, who was, he was before anything else was. Amen. And who is to come, the Almighty. Who is to come, who is to come back. Jesus is coming back someday and that's what this book is about. Jesus is coming back not as the sacrificial lamb, but as the conquering king. As the conquering king. And we are not going to have to fight a battle at all on the day of Armageddon. Jesus will do it all by himself, almost instantaneously. And because he does that, we win. But everyone else that comes against him loses. Loses. I don't want my grandkids not to be in heaven. I don't want my kids to not be in heaven. You know what? I don't even want my enemies not to be in heaven. I want all of those that God created, whether I like them or not, to come to know who Jesus Christ is. And if you don't come to know who Jesus Christ is and receive him as your Lord, as your Savior, then your ticket ain't punched. You're not going to go. That's how simple it is, folks.
I, John, this is back to John the Apostle, your brother and companion in, in the suffering and the kingdom of patience endure uh, and patience endurance Amen. and patient endurance that our, our ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. He was out preaching the word of God and, and the you know, king locked him up and threw him on this island by himself. But on the Lord's day, now this is not the second coming. This is Sunday. This was a Sunday that he got this revelation. If you study through this, the Lord's Day is the Sunday, what the new way or the new Christian movement celebrates are called uh, Sunday, the day of the Lord, because that's the day Jesus rose. We talked about this all through the resurrection time, that uh, celebration that we had, and you know we celebrate Easter on Sunday because it's the day the Lord was raised from the dead. And that's what John is saying here. This is the Lord's day, the first day of the week on a Sunday. I got this revelation. I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Which said, write on a scroll and you will see and send it to the seven churches. To Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Those are the seven churches that we're going to start next week. And those seven churches will somewhere reflect you and I. Somewhere in there, you and I will be reflected as one of those churches. I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned and saw several golden lamps, seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white as wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were burning uh, blazing fire, and his feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. This is the power that we will see when Jesus comes back. If you read over in uh, Mark 9 or Matthew 17 or back in the book of Daniel 7 and 9, you will see that Jesus is described as having that snow white hair which represents his purity, which represents his truth without any dishonesty whatsoever. His long flowing robe with the golden sash represents he is the king of kings and the lord of lords and there is none above him. His eyes are like blazing fire which see through all sin and sees all sin and purifies all sin. There is nothing hidden that has been done that Jesus does not know about. And his feet were like bronze, bronze glowing in the furnace, which means he is steadfast and strong, never to be wavered from his ministry or his truth, which he is the truth. And his voice was like the sound of rushing waters, those rushing waters that will go and purify your soul, purify your spirit by washing it clean. His voice is his word, and the word is Christ. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sword, a double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. If you read over in the back of Revelations, I think it's in uh, 21, it says there will not even be a need in the new heaven and the new earth for a, a sun or a moon because Jesus will be our light. He will be the bright light that glows and shows our way. And he does the same thing today. He is the light that lights our path, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path to guide and direct us in whichever way we need to go. But we have to turn that light on. We have to receive that light. And Jesus is that light. The sword coming out of his mouth is the word. If you read over in 19, whenever he defeats, Revelation 19, whenever he defeats Satan, it is by the word that he speaks that he defeats Satan. 
It's not by swinging a sword. It's not by battling. It's not by saying, all right, you guys over at Rockin' Country Church, y'all charge that side. You guys over this church, charge that side. No, he comes back to the earth and he says, guess what, Satan? To hell with you. And it's done. The, all the armies that come against him will be defeated. And it says the blood will be in that valley, which is a huge valley, will be to the depth of a, of a horse's chest, which is from here about that high. And it will be done instantaneously. We don't have to do a thing except watch. Then, now we have to believe in that faith. But then all we have to do is watch. And we will be witnesses to that. It says that we will come back with him. Well, what do you mean come back with him? Where are we at? Well, if you know your scriptures, then you will be out of here. In the book of Revelation, it does not depict the rapture at any point in time. But I'm going to show you, it doesn't specifically say, but I'm going to show you where it, it states that these things have to happen before and these things have to happen after. Well, if there is a before and there is an after, then there must be something in the middle, right? And that's going to be the rapture. Right. That's going to be the rapture. Well, I thought rapture was not in the Bible. Rapture is not in the Bible. But if you go over into 1 Corinthians 15 or 1 Thessalonians 4, you can read about what the rapture is. And the rapture will happen. It will happen. And it happens, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you, it happens between the end of chapter 3 and the starting of, verse, of chapter 4. That's when the rapture is. Because it says in chapter 4, it says, after these things, this will happen. So between chapter 3 and chapter 4, that's when the rapture happens. And if you are the church, now this is not the Jews, if you are the church, you will no longer be here. What do you mean? What if I'm another church? Well, it's not what if you're this church, because this is not... The building is not a church. This is a building. You are the church. You are the body of Christ. All believers are the family of God. They are the church. And that's what's going to be raptured out. You think God's going to come down and say, hey, all right, all you guys get out of my building. I'm taking my building, my church. I'm taking it with me. He don't want this building. He's got a mansion that looks a whole lot better than this place. Amen. Although I'm pretty proud of our church building. But he has a mansion up there. He doesn't want the building. He wants you. And he wants me. Because that's the true church. <clears throat> I turned around to see, verse 12, the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was that someone that looked like the Son of God, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. And the hair on his head was white as wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in the furnace, and his voice was like the sound of the rushing waters. That scared the daylights out of me. Amen. It would. If I saw that, if I turned around and saw that, it'd be like, oh, if I didn't know scriptures. But because I know scriptures, I'm going to see that and I'm going to say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming like you said you would. I'm ready to go. And I hope you feel that same way. Because if you're scared of Jesus, you don't understand Jesus. If you're worried about tomorrow, you don't understand Jesus. If you're struggling over an issue, you don't know about Jesus. You need to come to know Christ himself, the man. And once you come to know Christ, who he is, and what he is, and what he can do, and what he will do, and what he has promised you, then it's no, no matter that you can't get through this life or seem you can't get through this life. Because Jesus is a Savior. A Savior. You see that? Save your 
you can put whatever on the end of it you want to. Okay? Yeah. All right? He saved mine a bunch of times too. He is a Savior. Verse 17, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet, though I was dead. John was so overwhelmed with his glory that he just, he passed out, pretty much. Then he placed his hand right on, his, his right hand on me and said, underline this. Jesus says that every time he comes to his, to his people. He says this when you come to him. He says, do not be afraid. Some translations may say, do not worry or do not fear. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am the living one. John, last time John saw Jesus was on the shore right after Jesus had died and was crucified and then rose again and then John saw him on the shore of the bank and sat with him and ate fish with him and bread with him. And then he ascended into heaven and that was the last time John saw him. And now John is seeing him again and he says, do not fear, do not be afraid, John. I'm alive. Amen. I'm alive. Well, Jesus, I saw you ascend into heaven. You were gone. Where have you been all this time? Because this is about... It's about 50 years or 60 years. Because this is around 90 A.D. And, and Jesus was crucified around 29 A.D. So this is about 60 years later, I guess. And John is saying, how can you be? And Jesus says, because I am the living one. And see, we need to take hold of that. Because he lives, we too shall live. If he doesn't live, we don't live. He says, I am the living one. Then he goes on to explain it to John to where you'd have to get somebody to help you not understand it. He says, I was dead. I died. And now look, I am alive forever and ever. Amen. 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 He said, John, I did die. It's all real. It's all true. It all really happened. You're not being deceived. You saw everything that happened. But now, but now I'm alive. Look, I'm alive and I will live forever. And Jesus says over in John 14 and 15, he says, because I live, you too shall live. And John wrote that because Jesus told him to write that over in the Gospel of John. And now Jesus is coming back and saying, look, remember what I told you to write down years ago? I told you to write it down when I told you to read the, write the gospel. I said, right on there, because I live, you too shall live. And here I am. John, you're about to die because you're getting pretty old there, buddy. It's about your time. But guess what? You're going to live again. Why? Because I live. It's the same promise to you and me. The same promise. Because he lives, we too shall live. And then he goes on and he says, and I live forever. Man, thank you. <laughs> but he also says, and I hold the keys to death in Hades. I talked to you a couple of weeks ago about judgment. We talked about, you know, what you got in your eye. You look at other people and you say, oh, I'm glad I'm not that person. Well, to somebody else, you are that person. Jesus says, I hold the keys to death in Hades. That means I hold Jesus. I hold the keys that either gives you that life forever or gives you damnation forever. Jesus is that key. He doesn't just hold the keys. He is the key. He is the key. Right therefore, verse 9, 19. Right therefore, write it down. 
Just like I told you how to read, how to write the Gospel of John, I want you to write this down, which is the Revelation. If you go back over to 1, chapter 1, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show, to show his servants what must take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who testifies that he saw this. He saw everything. This is the word that in the testimony of Jesus Christ. He said, John, write this down. What you have seen, what is now and what will take place later. What you have seen, what I'm going to show you or reveal to you right now through this word. Rock and Country Church, what you are going to see by reading these words and listening to Woody. Not that I'm anything special. It's just God's called me to read it. So I'm reading it. All right. You can do it just as good as I can. But you, what you have seen, what is now, what is existing right now at this time in 2018 and what has happened later on or earlier when John wrote this down all the way up to what will happen. I'm going to explain it all to you and I want you to write this down, John. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And that's the pastors of the seven churches in the scriptures. In the scriptures of these seven churches, which is uh, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergama, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. That's the pastor of those churches. You, on the other hand, are the angels of Rock and Country Church. You are the angels. Why? Because you are a priest just like I am a priest in God's eyes. You are called to spread the gospel just like I'm called to spread the gospel. You're not necessarily called to, to pastor a church, though you may, but you are called to be a minister of the gospel, which is the exact same thing I'm called to do. But for this scripture's sake, the seven stars are the pastors of these seven churches. And the seven lampstands <coughs> are the seven churches. Seven lampstands. Well, why is he referring to a church as a lampstand? This church, this church, Rock and Country Church, you, as a part of Rock and Country Church, are called to be a light of the world. You're called to be a light to seven points. You're called to be a light to your house. You're called to be a light to your job. You're called to be a light to anyone who comes in contact with you. What do you mean a light? You're called to be the light of Christ that lives in you. You're called to share that light. To let that light shine on others so that they will come to know who Christ is. You are that lampstand because you are the church. You're not supposed to take that lampstand and put it underneath the basket or put it underneath the table as it says over in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You're called to be a light to all those you come in contact with to let Jesus shine forth from you. But the question always is the same question. Do you turn the switch off or do you keep the switch on? Because many times people will walk out this door and they'll go sit down at Chili's restaurant and they'll sit there and they say, oh, well, we don't need to pray. It's, you know, we'll pray later over our food. God always said, give thanks. Every time he ate, he gave thanks. Okay, he asked the blessing. Well, you know, we don't want to pray for that person over there. You know, somebody might look at us and say, oh, well, you know, what in the world are those crazy people doing? They're over there praying. Oh, this guy prayer's not going to help that guy. Hey, aren't you one of those church people? Don't you go to church pretty regularly? What is all this about, about God and Jesus and all? Can you help me with something? Oh, no, 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 no. It's just, you know, it's just I just have to do it every week because my wife tells me to do it. Do you turn the light off when you leave here? Many people do. 
I kind of referred to this a little bit ago whenever I first started when I said, oh yeah, I come to church on Sunday to get my tank all filled up because I know I'm going to need it through the week and as it diminishes through the week, I just know I'm going to come back next Sunday get it filled up again. That's all about you. Once you are saved, it ain't about you anymore. It's not about you anymore. But it is about you and what you can do for others. Jesus never denied anyone who came to him. If somebody comes to you and says, will you pray for me? You better step up. If you're sitting at Chili's and there's somebody behind you that you feel the urge of the Holy Spirit to pray for, it was so beautiful. This little, the, 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 not the baby, they had these, this couple, this young couple had a, I think it was a seven week old baby, boy, a little tiny baby, and that's what drew my attention. Baby started squalling in my ear, and I, mm -hmm. what's that? And I do love babies, I do love babies. They don't love me because I scare them with my voice, but I love babies. But they had this little girl that she's, she's three years old, and she had on her, her uh, little dance outfit, I think is what it was, but she looked like a little princess, you know. And she had on pink boots and pink uh, leg things, leg pants or whatever you call them, and a pink little dress suit and a pink bow in her hair. You know, the typical beautiful little girl, you know. And I said, well, you just look like a little princess. And she says, I am. <laughs> I said, well, you're so pretty. What have you been doing? She says, I've been dancing. And she went to a dance class or whatever. And I said, uh, will you pray with us? And she goes, yeah, yeah. And so we kind of held hands over the benches and all. And we all prayed together. And I prayed for that family, et cetera. But anyway, the point is simply this. When you leave this church, does anybody see the light of Christ in you? Or do they just see it when you're here? If they just see it when you're here, you know what? I'd rather you not come. Amen. Whoa, what do you mean? You want me to come to church? Yes, I want you to come to church. But I want you to be that church when you leave here. Amen. We don't need church folks here. We got a bunch of them. But out there, we need church folks. Out there, we need the light of, of Christ shown to the world. In here, we're all bright. Jerry, right? Yeah, we got it. We're happy we ain't going to hell. Amen. But what about out there? Your mission field's not in here. Your mission field's out there. Come on. Your mission field's out there. You have to be that light. You have to cast that light to others so that they may see Christ. Because you know what? You may have tomorrow. They may not. I have sat with many a people as they've died, and I've sat with many people that were going to die within just a few hours or days or whatever. <laughs> you don't know. Hey. I don't know. So we are to be that light each and every day. Each and every day we are to be that light. I'm going to conclude with this. Over in, John, over in Revelations 1 and 3, it says, Blessed is the one who reads aloud these words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart, take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. The time, excuse me, the time is near. For Christians, we are not appointed to suffer the wrath that is coming. And there is a wrath coming. We're going to be raptured out, and we're going to talk about that as we get a little closer to it. But there, we as Christians are not appointed to, to be here. Well, you know, I hear the rapture is mid-trib. People believe post-trib, mid-trib, pre-trib. Post-tribulation, the end of the, the tribulation, mid-trib, the middle of the tribulation, pre-trib, uh, before the tribulation, that the, the rapture is going to happen. The rapture is going to happen before before the tribulation times. And believe me, you want it to. Well, why do you say it's going to happen before? Well, you can just write these down. I'm going to tell you where they're at, but you might want to write them down. Romans 8, 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath but to receive salvation, salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Romans 5, 9. Since we have been justified through Christ's blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Amen. And again, you can read about the rapture in 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15. It's going to happen. The tribulation times are coming. The rapture is going to happen. But will you be raptured out or will you be left behind? The only way to be raptured out is to be washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Washed clean by the blood of Jesus. That washing that you receive through receiving of the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus, which is God, if you do not repent of your sins and receive Jesus, your sins are not paid for, they're not washed away, and you will suffer the wrath of God, and you will pay and be accountable for your sins. Amen. You will. Well, I'll just wait until I see Jesus, then I'll say, Jesus, save me. Too late. It doesn't work that way. Amen. Too late. It doesn't work that way. Because when you see Jesus, and remember where it said, every eye will see. When you see Jesus, then he's already here. It's too late. Amen. It's too late. Come on. Well, maybe he'll let us know that he's coming right before he actually comes. Yeah. I bet he'll send you an email. <laughs> You're right. Hey, you know what? Keep your phone on. He might text it to you. <laughs> he won't. It will come and it will happen in the twinkling of an eye. Faster than you can blink. You know that when you see somebody kind of tear up a little bit, you see that little glisten in their eyes, that little sparkle? You know what I mean? That sparkle, they actually have a time frame for that. And it's the smallest amount of time known to man. It's less than a second by far. It's just that little pink, you know? That's how fast it's going to happen. It's going to happen so fast, you're going to go, what happened? Where'd Jerry go? Where'd Kathy go? Oh, shoot, why am I still here? <laughs> Serious, don't, don't think because you come to church, you're saved. See, God knows what's in your heart. You can sit here all day long and say, Oh, yes, Father, I am your righteous child. Thank you for loving me so much. I know I'm so great in your eyes. That might not work, so please don't use that. <laughs> it would be far better to say, Jesus, Save. I need a Savior. Amen. Save me. Amen. That works if it comes from a heart. And I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. Guys, if you'll remove your hats. If there's anybody here today who has not received Christ as their Lord and their Savior, today may be your last day. I pray it not be so, but I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. We had a young lady here that one week she was here, one Wednesday night she was here, one Friday she died. It happens. You don't know when your time is up, but one thing is guaranteed, someday your time will be up. And if you have not received Christ as your Lord, as your Savior, then you will be dead in the grave. And that's where you will remain until the great white throne judgment seat, which will be after the thousand year reign of Christ then you will be called up, those who are dead. And in Hades, the sea will give up the dead, and hell will give up their deads, and the grave will give up the dead. And they will stand before Jesus and then be cast into the eternal fire. That's the way it works. I didn't write it. It's in the end of the book. It's in the end of the book. And I pray that's not you. I pray it's not you. If you don't want to suffer the wrath of God, then just simply repeat after me. All heads bowed, all eyes closed, please. All heads bowed, all eyes closed, please. 
If there's anyone here today, no one is looking, no one sees you, no one but you are aware of this. If that is you today, and it's time for you to rededicate your heart to Christ. I'm not asking you to be baptized again or sprinkled with water again. I'm asking you to make a commitment in your heart right now to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. By simply raising your hand and putting it down. Anybody here today who wants to make that recommitment, I raise my hand. I'm the pastor of this church. I raise my hand because I will commit myself each and every day to God. I will, I will come to God each and every day and I will praise Him and honor Him and glorify Him and ask Him to be with me each and every day. So if that's you, please raise your hand up. Make that commitment to God. Yes, I see them all around. Yes, raise your hands up to God. Yes, tell Him that you love Him. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Make that commitment to Him. If you have not received Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior, I ask you today, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because that's between you and God alone. But I ask you to repeat these words after me. You can say them to yourself or out loud. But you must mean it in your heart. Dear Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. 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 God bless you all. If anybody needs prayer for anything whatsoever, we're going to be up here and we're wanting to pray with you. We want to come alongside you and stand with you and pray with you over any concern, over any issues in your life. Remember, we still have two songs, so please don't leave. Especially during this next song. This is a time to praise God, to worship God. This will be a time to reflect yourself and where you're at with God. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. If anybody needs prayer whatsoever, please come forward. Let's all stand and worship. Worship, worship, worship our living God. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your home. Sing your praise unending. Praise Him, Amen. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Forevermore, Amen. Your holy name. I worship your holy name. God, I worship your holy name. Thank you. 
6.45, Wednesday evening 6.45, or next Sunday. Have a blessed, blessed week. God bless you. Ooh.